Jesus entered a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whose son was pleased to be welcomed in St. Martha's house as a guest, grant we pray that through her intercession, serving Christ faithfully in our brothers and sisters, we may merit to be received by you into the halls of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to me, mother, that you gave me birth, a man of strife and contention to all the land. I neither borrow nor lend, yet all curse me. When I found your words, I devoured them. They became my joy and the happiness of my heart because I bore your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit celebrating in the circle of the merrymakers. Under the weight of your hand, I sat alone because you filled me with indignation. Why is my pain continuous, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? You have indeed become for me a treacherous brook whose waters do not abide. Thus the Lord answered me, If you repent so that I restore you, in my presence you shall stand. If you bring forth the precious without the vial, you shall be my mouthpiece. Then it shall be they who turn to you, and you shall not turn to them. And I will make you towards this people a solid wall of brass. Though they fight against you, they shall not prevail. For I am with you to deliver and rescue you, says the Lord. I will free you from the hand of the wicked and rescue you from the grasp of the violent. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. God is my, refuge, my refuge on the day of distress. Rescue me from my enemies, O oh my God. From my adversaries, defend me. Rescue me from evildoers. From the bloodthirsty men, save me. God is my refuge on the day of distress. For withhold, for behold, they lie in wait for my life. Mighty men come together against me. Not for any offense or sin of mine, O oh Lord. God is my refuge on the day of distress. O oh, my strength, for you I watch. For you, O oh God, are my stronghold. As for my God, may his mercy go before me. May he show me the fall of my foes. God is my refuge on the day of distress. But I will sing of your strength and reveal at dawn in your mercy. You have been my stronghold, my refuge in the day of distress. God is my refuge on the day of distress. O oh, my strength, your praise I will sing for you. O oh, God, O oh, my stronghold, my merciful God. God is my refuge on the day of distress.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Martha, patroness of hospitality and of welcoming guests into each one's homes. St. Martha is one of those few saints that whenever we come upon her feast or whenever we once again hear her story or the account in the gospel about her, that we kind of just kind of a little bit laughed a little bit or chuckled because of the way her story is unfolding, the way her story is presented. Like St. Thomas the Apostle, whose feast we celebrate, celebrated earlier this month, it seemed that Martha is one of those saints who can't get things right. If we are just going to take the gospel account of her story at face value, if you recall, it's not in our gospel today, but if you recall, when Jesus went and visited Martha and Mary, it seemed that Martha was kind of frustrated because she was doing a lot of things while Mary was just there listening to Jesus. And then Jesus kind of rebuked her because Mary has chosen the better part, that she should do the same and all those kind of things. And so we think that because Jesus rebuked her, that, Mary did, that Martha did not get things right with the way she handled herself before the Lord. But that is not actually the, the reality of the story, that the Lord just kind of acknowledges that Mary did a better part because what Mary was doing is something that reflects of what we will all be doing at the end of time when we all get to heaven, to sit and behold the face of Jesus, to just continuously listen to him and let him minister to us. But it did not say that Martha was wrong. Of course, we're still called to be hospitable, to welcome guests, to treat each guest as if they are Jesus coming to visit us in our homes. And that is what Martha was doing, and Jesus acknowledged that, but said that that is good while here on earth, but when you come to eternal life, what Mary did was better because she was preparing for that. But there's also another aspect of the Feast of St. Martha, but actually something that all three of them, Martha and her sister Mary and their brother Lazarus, could teach us, especially when it comes to their relationship with the Lord their relationship with Jesus. They did not treat Jesus as a celebrity as some of the other disciples did. They did not look to him as somebody who is just a miracle worker, somebody who's a teacher or a preacher, or somebody who is just doing deliverances and healing all here and there. They treat Jesus as somebody who is their friend, as a friend to them, as a friend that is always welcome to their homes. But what's really unique about their relationship with him is that when he comes to their homes, Jesus can be himself. Jesus does not have to perform things. He does not have to say or give teachings. Jesus could just be a friend that comes to their home and be himself. They let Jesus be Jesus when he comes to them. And as you've seen in our gospel today, Martha kind of approached Jesus as a friend who truly, would truly approach another friend. Like she was very direct, she was very frank with what she said to him. There was no kind of sense of like pretenses or anything about that. And I think it teaches us here a great lesson about the kind of hospitality that we give to Jesus when we welcome him into our lives. That more often than not, we ask Jesus to come into our lives, but we ask him to come in a certain persona or to do certain things or to fulfill certain things that we want him to do. But what Martha and Mary and Lazarus teach us is that Jesus wants to come into our homes and to just be Jesus, to let himself be himself 
when he is with us when we encounter him as a priest i am very grateful for a cup of a lot of uh, families and married couples who welcome me into their homes not as a priest but as a friend somebody where i can just relax and sometimes even hear things or be told of things that usually people don't tell to a priest out of respect to the priest and i'm grateful for that it helps me to see things in perspective and i think that that's a great example for us with the way Martha and Mary and Lazarus welcomed Jesus into their homes. She, they welcomed him as one of their own and is not afraid to be honest with him and to let him be himself. So I think today it's a great way for us also in the example of Martha to kind of look at how we welcome Jesus into our lives and to see whether we welcome him as somebody that we expect to do things to be somebody else. Or do we welcome him as somebody who truly is Jesus in our lives? May Martha and Mary and Lazarus continue to inspire us to see Jesus and welcome him into us and let Jesus be Jesus in our lives. With confidence and trust, let us bring our prayers and petitions before the Eternal Father. For church leaders, may they be blessed with strength as they minister to those entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may God give them fortitude to always seek justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, may they come to share in the fullness of Christ's glory and enjoy his favor forever. We pray to the Lord. The third intercession of Our Lady of Brom Supper, that we will be spared all loss of life and property during this hurricane season. We pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us offer our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Almighty God, hear now our prayers, and in your great love, answer them through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders in St. Martha, O Lord, we humbly implore your majesty that as her homage of love was pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are praised in the company of your saints 
and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Shelton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. To those joining us from social media, please join me now in an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of this fallen world, so that following the example of St. Martha, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass ascended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits to prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. 